We want to welcome you to uh, the Rhythm of Christmas. Go tell it on the mountain. For those of you guys who are new joining us, new families, um, this production, the, the drama portion of the production, was written and will be performed by the 10th grade class. Uh, all of the music will be performed by the students in all different grades under the direction of Ms. Tara Mora, our music teacher. And we are excited you're in for a treat tonight. But I would like to open us with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for the Christmas time. We thank you, Lord, that you did not just make us, but you came to rescue us, that you came to give yourself in our place, that we might know you forever and enjoy your presence forever. Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone who is here tonight. Lord, we pray for all of our children right now that you would calm their nervous tummies and help them to remember everything. But more than anything else, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified and we rejoice in you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we also have an, a contingent from CCRGV, the Worship Rangers. And the Worship Rangers are going to come up on the stage, and they're going to get us started off.
mom, I'm home. Come in, Victor. How's dad doing? Victor, he's not his best, but he wants to talk to you. Okay. He's been going about some nonsense lately. I think it's best if you hear it from him yourself. Okay. Victor, I want you to listen so that dad won't be sad during his final moments with his son, okay? It might sound crazy and weird, but be polite for your dad. <sighs> okay. Okay, now come in. Dad? <coughs> son, is, is that you? Yes, dad. I'm here. <coughs> come, come here, son. I, I don't have much time. Dad, what's wrong? Mom said you had something to say to me. What is it? Son, I, I want to tell you about a treasure that's, that's hidden at the top of, of the Mount of Wisdom. A treasure? What? It's nothing. He's been saying it all day. Mount of Wisdom. It's, it's the place where you'll find the treasure. Seek it, and you shall find it. Take this. Make Dad proud, son. They need it. Make me proud. Dad, you gonna be fine. Victor, you did a good job. Let's go get dinner now. Victor, you know Dad has not been doing well. He's been talking about these things for the past few days. I know, Mom, but he sounds serious and urgent. Everyone's serious when they're close to dying, but some can lose their minds while doing so. Mom, this map... That map isn't going to take you anywhere. I don't know where he got it, but there is no treasure. It's just something your dad made up. Okay. Okay, now bring the table while I get dad some soup. Okay. Dad? It's dinner. Dad? Dad, come on, wake up. Dad? from the storm found no place at the keeper's door it was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow the sleeping town did not know that lying in a manger low a savior king who had no home has come to heal our sorrows is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there It's counting sheep at night Do not fear the glory light You are precious in His sight God has come to raise the lonely Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Mother 
the holds the promise tight Every wrong will be made right But the road is straight and the burdens lie For in his hands he holds tomorrow Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are, but it may set you apart. He was a good dad, cherishing and loving. We will remember him always. May he rest in peace. The Mountain of Wisdom. Hey man, I'm sorry about your dad. He was a good guy. Oh Victor, I'm so sorry for your loss. He was a noble man. Hey, sorry I had to be during Christmas season. Thank you all for your condolences. You are great friends. However, this is not the end of my dad's legacy. What do you mean your dad's legacy? My father gave me a map to find a treasure at the top of a mountain before he passed away. Wasn't your dad kind of out of his mind before he passed away? That sounds fun, Victor, but your dad just passed away. He needs some time to take a break. I agree with Elliot. You just lost someone you love and you should wait till you are in the right state of mind. I am perfectly fine, Lucy. My dad gave me this map. I need to finish his legacy. This map is the only way to the treasure. Finding the treasure could bring me even closer to my dad. I don't want to go alone. If you are concerned about me, come with me. I'm willing to go with you, Victor. Since when were you up for an adventure? Since now, apparently. I think it'll be fun to follow along. Fine then. If Scarlet is going, so will I. How about you, Elliot? Are you sure you're up for this, friend? I have to go, Elliot. I need to find the treasure. All right, but only because you're my best friend. Great. Thank you all. This means everything to me and my dad. Our journey starts tomorrow. Get ready. This is going to be a hard journey.
your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. Characters have arrived deep into the forest looking for their first landmark on their map. Okay guys, we're looking for a tree that looks like a T-shape. What's that? Oh my gosh, it's a monster! Guys, it's just a kid. Hey, that's not nice. Wait, what if they're cannibals? Why would you say that? Look, there it is. The first landmark, a T-shaped tree, and there seems to be a small village about half a mile that way. I don't think so, Victor. That tree looks more like a Y than a T. Well, great. Wait, do you hear that? I, I hear it. Ah, there's more of them. Come on, let's see what they're doing. Maybe they can give us some directions. They probably know these mountains quite well.
Victor and his friends enclose in on the village and decide to hide to watch the gnomes first before they make their move. They watch intently, intrigued by the festive decorations. Ah! A spider! We're all gonna die! Uh, greetings. We come in peace. Hello there, short people. Hello there, who might you be? Why are they giants? Aw, it's so, ow! Bad gnome, bad gnome! Hi, I'm Victor, and these are my friends, Elliot, Lucy, and Scarlet. We are in search for a so-called treasure, and I have a map here, and we're wondering if you might be able to help us. We call much of it. I do. Oh, yeah, the map to the treasure. Well, that's a long way to the treasure. You're looking for a rock that resembles a baby sheep. A sheep? Why? But you'll see if you get all the way to the top. It might get rough along the way, but don't stop climbing. Reward is well worth it. And if you make it to the top on your way back, you can join us in our celebration. When you get to the top, you will see an old man there who has shown it to us. Okay. Thank you so much for your help and hospitality. Guys, let's go. Bye, gnomes. Bye. Bye.
group continues the ascent up the mountain, they encounter many dangerous situations. But they end up meeting the evil gnomes. The chief of the tribe greets the young travelers in a rather hostile manner. Who are you and what are you doing here? I'm Victor. These are my friends, Elliot, Scarlet, and Lucy. We are searching for a lost treasure. My dad gave me a map before he died. Oh well, isn't that interesting? Yes sir, we're almost there, but our journey is getting harder by the day. I mean, we haven't found the treasure yet, but if this is something you feel you need to do, I'll keep going with you. Yeah, your dad wasn't really himself towards the end. What are you guys talking about? We've made it this far. We can't just stay here. I promised my dad that the treasure is real. I'm tired and it's getting cold. It's starting to snow, but like I said, I'll keep going. Fern is probably right. I never heard of the supposed treasure you speak of. It might be your best interest to stay here while I'm comfortable and safe. Yeah, I think he was right. Victor was not getting anywhere. It's getting too hard for me. I'm gonna stay here with the gnomes. I'm sorry, Victor. Scarlet, if you wanna stay here, then just be careful. We'll come back for you. I understand, but I need to go and find what my dad set out for me. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I almost got there and gave up at the very end. He wouldn't want that. Victor, trends are right! It only gets more and more treacherous. Nobody in this past here! But if you want to go ahead, we're going to take really good care of your friends here. No, my dad said I need to find this treasure, and I will, even if it's the last thing that I do. I'm gonna get going. I don't see any use in us being here, especially since all you guys want to do is complain and try to discourage us. We are leaving, Victor. Elliot's right. We have to keep going. Bye, guys. Stay safe.
You've got to give them credit. They do know how to sing. Yes, they are gifted little beings. Even though we lost one friend, we should keep pushing on. I agree with Victor. We should keep going if we want to find this treasure. I think we should head back down with the others. This storm is getting really bad. No, we should move on. We should never give up just because of the bumps along the way. Bumps? You call the storm a bump? I can't feel my fingers and I can barely see in front of me. <sighs> You're just being overdramatic. I can see just fine. What if the gnome sent us on a wild goose chase? Like I said, just keep on hiking. We should keep going because there's still a chance that there's something at the top of this mountain. Why would the gnomes lie to us? And why would Victor's father lie to him? You know that his mother told you that his dad was out of it in his last days. But it all adds up. My father, the gnomes, the map, it can't be a lie. But there's food and shelter down in the forest with the gnomes. Just think who or what could be up there. Oh, I'm thinking about it. But what if we never make it? I like treasure just as much as the next person, but I would rather be alive. If you want to keep going and freeze, by all means you can. I'm going back down with the others where it's warm. I wish you good luck. And then it was down the two. You won't leave me on this quest, right? No, Victor. I'm faithful all the way, buddy. That's good to hear.
Are young travelers, weak and weary from the long, strenuous ascent, make their final approach to the top? As they reach the peak of the mountain, gasping for each breath, they glance up. Victor, look! Finally, light ahead. Wow, we've made it, and look at how far we've come. Everything. It's just so beautiful. Victor, look! The treasure, it's here! What's this? We came all this way for just a book? This has to mean something. It says the Bible. What is Bible? That there is greater than any other treasure you could ever find. I don't, I don't get, get it. it. What, what do you mean it's greater, greater than, than any, any treasure? treasure? It's, it's just, just a book. book. This book holds the greatest story of all time. It speaks of our Creator, who made each and every one of us, and who loves us all very much. He sent His Son Jesus to this earth to give us hope by dying on the cross for our sins. Do you know why this day is so important? No. Why? Today is the day Jesus, our Savior, was born. Why is Jesus so important? Jesus is important because when he died on the cross, he took on all the sins of the world. By this, we all have the ability to ask for forgiveness and ask Jesus into our hearts. When we do this, Jesus comes into our lives and continues to guide us on this path. And by Jesus, we will one day go to heaven with him. Just think about how amazing that is. Someone loved you so much to come to this earth, never sin, and willfully die in the worst way, so you might accept him into your life, follow him, and one day go to heaven. How do we ask Jesus in our lives? All you have to do is confess you are a sinner, ask for forgiveness for those sins, and ask Jesus into your heart. Do you both want to do this? Yes. yes. Okay, repeat after me. Dear God, I confess to you that I am a sinner. Dear God, I confess, I confess to you that, that I am a sinner. I pray that you would forgive me of all my sins. I pray, I pray that, that you would forgive me for all, all my sins. sins. And would come into my life and would you come into my life? In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that is the most important decision you could ever make. And the stunning thing is, is that you can share this treasure with anyone and everyone. All your friends and everyone you have met on the path, you can share this treasure with. This is the only thing that can restore the forest people from their wicked ways. And I ask you one last thing. What is it? Are you willing to go out and share this treasure with the wicked forest people? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Now, go out and share the treasure. Yes, sir. Thank you, we will.
reached a point that I think it's time for audience participation. How do you feel about that? Yes? We have this little jig for you. And it goes like this. La, da, 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 da. Let's try that all together. Here we go. Yes, la 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 there's a flame in my heart that will never grow cold Today is a Savior's day Though the path may be covered in virgin white snow Your starlight will guide the way And the angels are singing, we are not alone Today is a Savior's day
Hey, you're back. Why did you come back? Of course they came back. Where else would they go after they find no treasure? Actually, we found the treasure, and we came back to share it with you all. Yeah. Oh, really? That's so kind of you. Where is it? Where's the box? Well, it's not like a treasure chest or anything, but it's still very important. Well, in that case, we don't care what you have for us. Just leave. No, no. Hear us out. This is important. No. Get away from us. Yeah. It's something that'll benefit you and your people. Please, just for one moment. If it starts to sound bad, I have my people drive you out. Thank you. Have you ever thought of your actions to be bad? Yeah, what about it? Did you know how this affects others? Yes. What are we supposed to do? Magically fix ourselves? You don't fix yourself. He helps you. Who? Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Savior? From what? I don't need a Savior. Those bad actions that we just talked about, they have consequences. What kind of consequences? Being separated from Jesus, having eternal damnation. Well, how on earth are we supposed to save with Jesus when we look like this? And that's why he died for you. What? Jesus, knowing who you are and all the bad things you do, came into this world to take your punishment. And now, anyone who accepts him will be saved from the consequences. How are we supposed to do that? All you need to do is just believe in him. He loves you all. Anyone, no matter how bad you think you are, can be his child if you just believe. Could it be that simple? Yes, he made it simple just for you. For everyone in that case, that all may come to his kingdom. This is the treasure. This is why it is so important. It's okay. Now you guys have been saved, and that's the most important part. Yeah. So, what do we do now? What do you mean, what do we do now? We gotta share it to all the world. We have been saved! Hey, if we hurry, we can still make it to the celebration. As we hear the cheers and jubilant music in the distance, the chief gnomes, along with their kin, gather with the good forest gnomes, and they join in the joyful chorus of the greatest treasure of all time. Watchman upon that city wall, and if 
I am a Christian, I'm the least, the least of all. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, and that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Jesus Christ is born. Here we go. Come on. That was awesome. Thank you guys. They do a great job, guys. That is... they, they, just, they just brought to life a story that's 2,000 years old. And that story is that God loves you. The story is that God came into this world to rescue every one of us. And this day, this time of year is when we celebrate that event. It's when God sent forth his son to come and become like us. He walked this earth. He, he dwelt in a fallen world. And the Bible says this, and, and all the gospels give us an account of it in some way. M Matthew and Luke kind of give us a greater detail, but, but I like the way John 
kind of summarizes that whole event. He says it like this. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And in him was life. And the life was a light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That light was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, it says, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. You see, what what John declared is, is, is that God sent his son into this world even though he was the creator of it. He was the one who sustains it. And he's the light that came so that you and I can have light, so that you and I can have truth. And a world that we're living in is dark right now. And the darkness is is permeating our culture and our society but that light shines down and God has given you me the opportunity to to embrace truth to embrace him to be forgiven for our sins and to dispense the darkness that's in us this is this is the cool thing it says whoever would believe in his name he would call the son of God the daughter of God, you become part of the family of God. The moment that you declare, I'm, I'm the guilty one. God's came into this world to die in my place for my sins. And the moment that I acknowledge that and ask for forgiveness for that, the Bible says that you pass from death to life. You go from darkness to light in that very moment because you embraced the truth that God came into this world on your behalf. There, there's an interesting passage just a little bit further in John chapter 3. It says this. And I, I, I'll, just, I'll just read it short. Real quick. Watch, watch what he says. This is the condemnation that the light came into the world and men loved the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they were done in God. And he says, look, those who are going to continue in evil, they they don't want nothing to do with the light. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus and what he came to accomplish for you. But those who embrace that, those who believe that, those who acknowledge that God is the Son who came into this world to die for you, you now have this light that shines so that you can be washed and forgiven and cleansed and you can begin to see things the way they really are according to God's truth, according to God's kingdom. And it's all there, the book. I love this analogy, right? The book that's able to give you truth so that you're able to navigate through a dark world. You see, that, that, that same truth can transform your life today. He can change you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how messed up you've been. God loves you. And he came into this world so that you can be forgiven and so that you can have a relationship with him. And if this afternoon you acknowledge, you know what, I, I need that light. I need God's forgiveness. I need God to come into my life. It's as simple as by faith with your mouth and from your heart to say, God, I, I want to invite you to be my Lord. I want to invite you to change my life. And forgive me and cleanse me and begin to do a work inside of the darkness that's been in me. And if you this, this evening are, are ready to make that decision, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, whoever you may be, I don't believe you're here because it's an accident. I believe you're here because God loves you. And he wants you to know this message that they've all declared to you today, the message that God came into this world to bring light into your life. But you have to embrace that light. You have to invite him to come in. And we're going to pray. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to make a decision and to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord, to be your Savior and say, God, I'm guilty just like the rest of the world that didn't comprehend it. I don't want to stay in that state. I want to now embrace this truth that you've declared. So we're going to pray, and then I want to give, make, give you an opportunity to make a decision. I, I, I'm convinced of this, is that every one of us got to choose one day. You're going to choose either for him 
or you're going to choose against him. You're going to say, I like darkness or I want, I want light. And today is one of those days, man, where you get to make a choice and say, God, I, 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 want, I want what you have for me. I want to ask you to come in and be my Lord and take over my life. Let's pray, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you for every one of these students, Lord. Thank you for the message that they declare and for the lives that you've given them. And Lord, would you bless them tremendously. And Father, we also pray today, God, for maybe some of us here that have never embraced the truth that you came because you love us. That that darkness that we've lived in, Lord, is, is what's going to eventually send us into eternal darkness. But God, you've came to rescue us, to save us, to bring light so that we can be changed and transformed and we can become sons and daughters of a king. And so, Father, I pray today, God, if there's any of us here that need to make that decision, need to ask you to come and be the Lord of our life, that today would be that day, God, where you would touch us, that your Holy Spirit would convict us and that we would finally surrender and ask you to be our Lord. And just as every eye's closed and every head is on, maybe this, this evening's your appointment. God knocking on your heart. And you realize, you know what, I, I, I need to stop fighting against God. I need to surrender my life to God. And if that's where you're at this evening, I, I want to pray with you. And the Bible says it's that prayer of faith. And if you're here and you're ready to take that step of faith and say, God, I, I, I invite you to come into my life, I'm going to ask you just, just to nice and high, just say, you know what, Pastor Ray, I'm ready to pray that prayer. I want to ask Christ into my life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else, man, say, hey, me too. I'm ready. I want to, I want to invite Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Got you back there. God bless you. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. So you guys up here, amen. God bless you. That is so cool. If there's anybody else, man, we're going to pray right now to those that have raised your hand, but if there's anybody else, man, I don't want to leave you out. The very most important decision that you'll make in your whole life is what did I do with Jesus? What did I do with the light that, that shone into my heart? Did I embrace it or did I reject it? If there's anybody else, man, I'd love, love to pray with you as well, man. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to pray. Those of you that have made that decision this evening, I'm going to ask you from your heart and with your mouth, would you declare these words as you talk to God? I'm just going to lead you in that prayer. This is your prayer as we go before him. Let's pray together. Dear God, I confess to you, I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Thank you for sending your Son to die in my place. God, would you forgive me, cleanse me, and would you fill me with your spirit? Would you guide and direct my life? I surrender it to you right now, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. That's awesome. If you said that prayer, right off to my left, there's going to be some, some of our new believer counselors. They, they just can get you a Bible, pray with you, encourage you, help you in that decision you just made. Thank you guys for coming out. Let's stand together. Let's close in a word of prayer, and you'll be dismissed. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for this time. Thank you for these young men and women. Would you continue to bless them, watch over them? God, have your hand upon them. We thank you for all that you've done for us, and we thank you that we can celebrate this Christmas that you came into the world to be the light so that we can know you and follow you, God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.